So now we're going to get on to the scripting part of it. So I think I might actually split this into, into two if you like. So let's create two parts. So and then we don't have to group them together. Let's just group them together so it's easier to uh, find them in the, <clears throat> in the script. Let's name them part A and part B. Let's create a script. Right, so this is the basics of how to script dynamically on the creating those constraints. Basically all you need to do is have the parts available to you within the script. Something like would help if I select the window. Script. Oh. Parent part A. Let's duplicate that. Mouse. To part B. So now those parts are available to me in the script. You could have this in a sort of a for loop, so you can have many parts, as long as you've got two parts at that instance, I guess. So what I would do to create the attachment points first, or should I say, should I say that what we need first is, we need an attachment point in each of the parts, plus the joint, and the joint can be anywhere. It can be inside this model if you want, if you like, or it could be even be inside the script if you want. Something like um, insert part. Uh, there you go. It could be something like that if you like. Depends on where you, where, how you're working with your script sort of thing. I like keeping them inside a folder. Kind of like that. I might also show you how I sort of program and how I uh, sort of do the uh, folder or creating the folders on the fly if you like. Well let's do this first and I, I can show you how I sort of program it. Sort of a job sort of thing. So what we need is att81 for the attachment one equals instance new attachment and this new this function accepts the part class name and where it wants to be created in other words we're creating an attachment point and we want to create it into part a so what we do is put part a there you don't have to do that you can leave that blank kind of like that and then as long as you do something like as long as you do that somewhere in your script then it should create it inside that part if you don't if you forget that your joint will not work so that's essential that, that you do it either way is the same thing basically so that is basically just putting an attachment point inside part A. Basically doing this. Uh, where's attachment? Basically doing that, if you like. So we do that for this part B as well. So part B. Attachment two. Oh number and get so if we run this now we should have two part attachment points in those two parts like there we go attachment attachment at the moment they are created at the position of the of the part in other words right in the center if you want to offset those uh, positions Sometimes when you can't remember something, I would create it 
manually and then just read it down here like let's just say I didn't know what position was called I'll just create it reference it down here or wherever your properties is and then just copy the name just do attachment let's say what you reference your attachment point or any other part that you're scripting like ATA position which is basically the same thing down here so we're referencing that and of course since now Rex has actually updated their scripting uh, system it's actually easier to do it we just start typing and then you can just press enter when you're on the right thing and of course this takes a vector 3 value something like that at the moment that is exactly the same as what we got at the moment so what we want is to create a attachment point at this side and this side let's just say let's actually work that out manually and then we can actually script it so that's the wrong side just basically just play around with it until you actually get where the attachment point should be there you go so that's the setting that we want so let's write that down in our code so that's minus one on the z if you want to rotate the actual hinge point at the moment it's going uh, horizontal if you like to rotate that round I would do I think it's the orientation you can also do use your rotate tool and you can also use your move tool to move the attachment point some people some people don't know that you can do that really quite cool what you can do so now that will rotate around that way let's actually rotate it back as it was so let's actually do that proof of concept as I say it won't actually rotate it that well I know let's offset that part away from the brick so I can actually show you that it sort of rotates around on that axis and that is the actual point of origin of that axis if you like which it ro rotates let's do that minus five and then keep the attachment point two because we're working on the other part it'd be positive five so take it off somewhere here so let's have a look at what that does let's get rid of that attachment point and run the game so have we created our points at the correct positions so we've got part one there let's move that out there we go we've got part one there let's actually set that to visible so we've got two parts there let's move that one there you go we've got that's where the hinge point is going to be i might actually move that in a bit a bit more yeah let's move that in a bit, a bit more let's say 3.5 let's have a look at that so how's that now yeah as I said before this also works for any kind of uh, constraint and I think including that weld I haven't actually used that weld in the script yet I might actually use it in the future work out exactly what it is it means looking on the wiki reading up on it that's fine <laughs> I can do that yeah so there we go at the moment we haven't created the hinge or the joint if you like so let's actually set that in code where we can actually see the joint hinge 
or the, the actual attachment points. All you would do to, for that is equals true and then do that for the other one. Easy as that. So to create the joint between the two I'm not doing it like this. The same thing as the same thing as we uh, done with the attachment points like you don't have to name it hinge, just name it anything you like. I always fail at uh, t uh, spelling on constraint. <laughs> uh, well, we. Yeah, if you aren't, don't know how things are spelled or what they're called. Just do what I've done there. Go into right click on the part and insert object. Look for the part that you want to insert. And then you can use that as reference if you like. I don't think anybody could uh, program something straight flat without actually using references. I know I couldn't. So this hinge I'm going to put in here basically so what I would do for that is script parent which would be a script parent so the hinge constraint should be there at the moment the hinge constraint is not hooked up to anything it doesn't do anything at, the moment, at this stage but it's there so we got our uh, attachment points there and there and our hinge constraint at the moment it will not do anything it would just act like normal two two normal bricks as if they haven't got anything inside them so the magic is I'm gonna do a bit of magic now so it's sort of uh, as I say the magic happens now so what we would do to hink the hink hook those two up yeah brain engage your mouth for you please thank you <laughs> right so hit to attach the two uh, things to the hinge constraint what we do is hinge dot attach meant zero which is Even though it's the balls constraint, it's the same thing. Yeah, so we've got the attachment part section down here. We just name that. And then we set that to ATTA1. And then do the same for the second one, for the second attachment. Right, so and there we go. We've got our hinge uh, made. So. Let's run that. There we go, let's snap together. And let's see if I can actually rotate this now to show you it's actually rotating. There we go. So that's attached now. To control the actual motor of the hinge, you have to do a little bit more, sort of thing. So let's create a hinge constraint as reference let's actually set that to yeah let's leave that I was thinking about setting the hinge constraint to visible but it didn't actually show did it so what we do to set the hinge constraint to a safe set it to servo this next step might look complicated because we're going to use e numbers but because the way Redbox has actually made their scripting environment, it's really, really easy. So what I do to actually motorize the hinge is something like hinge attach actuator type even equals e none 
Uh, I always get this wrong. Actuator type servo. So now that should not move no matter what we do to, to these parts. Assuming I put the uh, let's actually anchor that so we can actually see it moving. Assuming I put some force in the actual hinge itself. Yep, there we go. So it's just stationary at the moment. Ah, which one is it? <laughs> so it's that one. Oh, excuse me. That's not very professional me burping on the camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah so when you say to from servo to none that's when the magic happens if you like if I set that to servo now oh okay so what we're going to do next is the angular speed and the torque yeah, it's trying to get up there, but you can't get there. There you go. So that's what you're going to do in script. So that's what you're going to do in script. Right. So, to move that in scripting terms, what I would do is something along the lines of hinge dot let's use this as reference so we can know what we're doing and get a velocity let's put that to something fairly big hinge I think we leave this as it is because that's uh, set to the max uh, acceleration, I guess, as it says. I'm guessing that's because it, these these constraints are still in a prototype state, so that might change later. You can actually play around with that if you want to, but it's advisable not to. What that, it, that, what that means is it's set to the max value that robots can actually understand. In other words, a huge number. <laughs> so what we can do is max motor torque. That's the next one that we're going to uh, target. Equals, let's say something huge again. You can play around with those values sort of thing. And then we're going to set the angle. Ah, that would help. We'll get the right one. Yeah, it would help. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Angular speed. I was wondering why that was named differently. I did the wrong, the wrong thing. You ready yet? Have a max torque. Let's add a few more zeros on that. It won't hurt. <laughs> Famous last words. Right, so now we are going to move this hinge uh, 45 degrees up, if you like. Uh, hinge target angle. It was 45. Let's actually put a weight there. Let's wait three seconds and then it should move. If I got everything right. Moment of truth. One, two, three. Brilliant. There you go. So if you wanted to, you can play around with that. Like, I don't know. I can make something up very very quickly so you can show you that you can actually animate it if you want to. Um, 
This is something on the fly. Oh. Right, so this this is going to be, look very complicated. So what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to type it out and then I'm going to explain what it does. Let's see if you can actually follow along as I type it out. Of course, we can do it in a while true do loop. Well, I think it's because I'm uh, recording it at, at the same time, I'm making loads of mistakes. <laughs> right. Uh, index equals one. Right. This is how, how I'll do it, sort of thing. It's a little bit weird actually coding while I'm uh, doing the video. I might actually fast forward this bit. I don't know. Depends on uh, how it looks when, when I actually come to edit this long video. But whatever. <laughs> um. Yeah, I think I'm going to split this video up into two. <laughs> I don't know how long I've been going for. Maybe a couple of hours or so. I don't know. Right. Right, let's change that and change that index. I've always done this this way. This then length modes and plus one or one. Right, so let's do that. Let's actually do less or equal. That's right. Right. So we need that. And index is set to one, we should be good.
Right, let's see if that works. So what I've basically created there is a way of actually controlling the hinge like uh, at different stages like in this case I've set it to three seconds it changes every three seconds it changes so in our modes table there we got an angle of zero an angle of five and an angle of minus 25 90 and 10 this value here is just basically an index to go through that table where this would be index 1, index 2, index 3, index 4 and then index 5. So when I'm uh, going through the if it, every 3 seconds it sort of resets itself and it increases the index by 1. So I've done an inline if statement to say if index plus one is less than the length of that table then index plus one or if it's above that the, the total length of that table as in how many elements is in that table in this case it's five it will equal back down to one so it continue going round. so this is very this is untested as you can see because I've just typed it out and I haven't even got this uh, in, uh, didn't get this prepared, it's sort of on the fly coding. So we might have a few bugs, it might work perfectly. But let's have a look. One, two, three. And I think we've got a few bugs. Is it actually setting the bits and pieces? It is, there we go. No, it is working because I set the first angle to uh, nothing. There you go. So that's how you animate your constraints if you like. There you go. Of course, you don't need that time thing. You can actually just say wait a few seconds. This is the way I would do it because it's more, a little bit more elegant. And of course, if you want to update every tick, with the old wait away, it will wait until, let's just say if you want to detect that, when it's in its down position, and you wanted it to fire as it's moving, let's just say. With a wait system, you could not do that. But with my system, you got the limit of 30 frames per second, because that's what I'm running on. On your machine, it might be 60. So, I should name that, rename that as frames per second. In my case, it's 30. So that's basically what all that is. So it goes through the wild who do loop. It goes through many, about as fast as Rubik's can actually handle. And I'm sorting out, I'm sort of adding one to the DT as it's go. So if I do this and then restart, you should see a large number accumulate as it's go sort of going through. There you go. So that's how many, how fast it's moving or going through. There you go. And I've worked out that 30 of those, I guess the modulus of that number of 30 equals just about one second so it works out to be uh, what frames per second you're running at which is uh, quite simple if you think about it so anyway as I said before this will work for every single constraint just have to make sure that you get your properties right and the naming right and I hope this hasn't been too long and drawn drawn out sort of thing and I should have done some prep beforehand uh, but whatever <laughs> and hopefully I'll be able to do this uh, these ones here work out exactly what they are I'm gonna put this online as a sort of a thing to play around with if you like and you can change the, uh, the settings in the script if you like it's up to you if you want to or not. I'll put it up for now so you can uh, work out what's what.
that's actually common that out so you don't go into your output so yeah let's actually make this a bit neater and this would be another video off my uh, my mind because I've been wanting to do a video like this for a while anyway this has been Tigazza in Roblox Studio and blimey four o'clock in the morning oh well and if you guys want me to do more tutorials like this just name the tutorial and I'll do my best I expect it would be on the fly like this one but I'll do my best to I guess to do the tutorial anyway catch you later guys Tigazza signing out